I really began covering the issue of voting rights after the 2010 election, uh, when many states flipped from blue to red or became a whole lot redder. And we began to see a wave of new voting restrictions, things like making it harder to register to vote, uh, cutting back on early voting, requiring strict forms of ID to cast a ballot that you never needed in any previous election, purging the voting rolls, disenfranchising ex-felons. Half the states in the country pass new voting restrictions after the 2010 election. And it wasn't really getting any coverage. So I became the first national reporter to cover this, first for Rolling Stone and then for The Nation magazine. Uh, and I really covered this issue all the way through the 2012 election, uh, when in Florida, for example, because that state cut early voting and eliminated voting on the Sunday before the election, when African Amer American churches historically held souls to the polls, voter mobilization drives, we saw six hour lines on election day in 2012 in Florida, and President Obama, when he was reelected, said on election night, we have to fix that. But what happened after the 2012 election is the Supreme Court struck down a key part of the Voting Rights Act, really the centerpiece of the Voting Rights Act, that said that those states with the longest histories of voting discrimination had to approve their voting changes with the federal government. That part of the law blocked 3,000 discriminatory voting changes from taking effect from 1965 to 2013. So it was an extremely important part of the most important civil rights law of the 1960s. And it was at that point that I decided that I really wanted to write my book. Uh, because I knew this wasn't just dry history. It wasn't just about telling the stories about people like John Lewis, as remarkable as they are. It was about the fact that people were living this in their lives all over again. As John Lewis told me, he felt like history was repeating itself, that he was fighting for things that he thought he had won one five decades later. Uh, and so just to talk about where we are in 2016, because this is very relevant to my book, the 2016 election is the first presidential election in 50 years without the full protections of the Voting Rights Act. This is the first presidential election since the Supreme Court gutted the Voting Rights Act. As a result, 16 states now have new voting restrictions in place for the first time. Uh, very important swing states like Wisconsin and Ohio and North Carolina and Virginia. Uh, and so I know there's been so much coverage in the media over who people are gonna vote for and what the polls are going to say. But I've been asking a very different question, which is will every eligible voter be able to cast a ballot? Uh, and I'm very concerned that they will not be able to. And so when you talk about the direction of our democracy, the theme of this panel, I don't think you can talk about the direction of democracy without talking about what's going on with voting rights and what's happening to the Voting Rights Act. And the last thing I'll say is there have been 20 presidential debates and the issue of voting rights has not come up. This is stunning. And I, I think that's a national tragedy because I don't believe this is a fringe issue. I don't believe this is a side issue. I believe this is one of the most fundamental issues in the 2016 election. And regardless if you're a Democrat or an independent or a Republican, you should be committed to seeing that everyone who wants to vote will be able to in 2016.